Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I will be your guide for the second of two modules related to roller alignment. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. Roller alignment is so important because it has many serious effects on your customer. The web. Alignment may affect the flatness of the web going through a machine. Alignment determines web path, such as might be important for color-to-color -color registration and printing, as well as less demanding processes. Alignment can affect the incidence of web damage and even help cause web breaks on brittle products such as paper. Alignment can affect wound roll quality. Finally, misalignment directly causes a very common type of wrinkling and can increase the incidence and severity of most types of wrinkling. These and other reasons should be more than sufficient motivation to study roller alignment. There are two ways to view roller alignment. The first is the mechanics view of alignment. Here we are concerned with how a maintenance department or contractor can measure roller positions and move rollers into alignment. They will be concerned with things like level and square and center lines. This mechanics view was the focus of the last module. The second way to view alignment is from the perspective of our customer, the web. The web views alignment in a very different way. The web does not care at all about level and square. Those are merely a convenience of measurement. In fact, the machine could be out of level by one centimeter, and if every roller were precisely one centimeter out of a level, the machine would run fine, from a strictly web handling point of view. The web's primary concerns are in-plane bending and out-of-plane twisting. The web's point of view will be the focus of this module. In-plane bending results when rollers are not parallel. This is the most serious type of misalignment because it risks path control problems, web breaks, and a most common type of wrinkling. To understand the risks posed by in-plane bending, we must first know the physics of the normal entry law that states that a web in traction will enter the next roller at a right angle. This is normal in the sense that it is the ordinary way webs interact with rollers. It is normal in the sense that normal is an alias of perpendicular. So a web in traction must bend to enter a misaligned roller at a right angle. This in-plane bending might cause problems, but we can't say for sure in general because problems are an economic judgment specific to a particular situation. However, what we can say for sure is that in-plane bending always poses four risks. The first is the risk of the web being damaged by being stretched on the outside of the curve. The second is the risk of being buckled on the inside of the curve. The third is the risk that the path of the web is disrupted. The fourth is the very real risk of a diagonal wrinkle. In summary, four risks for every single misaligned roller. Far less risky is out-of-plane twisting that occurs when rollers are skewed or scissored. Web handlers know that the web is about a hundred times as tolerant in twisting than it is in bending. They make use of this in applications such as the displacement guide where the intent is to change the path of the web a lot, but to do so without overstressing the web or risking wrinkles. Some dual spreaders also use this principle to separate numerous slit lanes without risking bending or wrinkling. Of course, while twisting is much, much more tolerant, there are limits to how far you can twist. If you go too far, you can overstress the edges. If you go too far, you can cause MD bagginess or a wrinkle in the center of the web. The point of this review is to show you that using one size fits all alignment standards might not make sense from a web handling point of view. Knowing web handling allows us to do practical problem solving, such as in the following example. Let us suppose that the web is wrinkling on roller number three. Which roller in which direction should be moved to clear the wrinkle? 
We do not need to know the science of wrinkling to make some pretty good guesses. We would move either roller 2 or roller 3 in the horizontal direction to make the pair parallel. So why not just roller 3 where the wrinkle forms? Wrinkling physics tells us that the wrinkle forms on the downstream of the pair that is not parallel. Thus, a wrinkle on 3 does not mean that 3 is crooked and 2 is straight. Roller 2 could be crooked and roller 3 straight, or they could be both crooked and none of that matters in web handling because all that matters is that they are not parallel. So aren't we concerned that moving 3 horizontally might cause a wrinkle to form in the span between rollers 3 and 4? Not so much for two reasons. First, web handlers know that the move would cause out-of-plane twisting in that span and that the web is very tolerant to twisting. Second, and more practically, we would scribe the bearing housing so that we could put it precisely back where it was. Note, however, that the situation changes enormously if the web goes directly from 3 onto the winding roller, rather than 4 first. Here we could move 3 and solve the wrinkling problem there, but we might create a new problem in the next span because a horizontal move of roller 3 will cause some in-plane bending of the roller 3 to winder span. In that case, we would make a horizontal move of roller 2 instead. Of course, this web handling trick is limited to emergency treatment of simple situations. In general, we would align the entire area or entire machine if we found a position was causing waste and delay due to roller misalignment. Knowing web handling allows us to set maintenance standards for practical and economic problem solving. By economic, I mean that the standards are neither too tight nor too loose. Looking at the figure below, which rollers need to be aligned and in what direction? Here, the entering and exiting rollers may need a full alignment. However, the rollers inside the accumulator only need to be leveled. Knowing this saves us money because leveling is the cheaper and easier direction of alignment. Knowing web handling will reduce the cost of aligning this machine section by more than one half without adding extra risk. There are three common alignment guidelines in use in the web handling industries. The tightest is found in the paper industry that specifies something like 20 micro radians at the dry end of the machine and in the winders. 20 micro radians is 0 0.02 millimeters per meter of width. In US units, this is two thousandths of an inch per hundred inches of width. Obviously, to achieve this level of accuracy of alignment, we would need measurements to be even more accurate and that is indeed the case. The optical tooling used to measure roller positions is on the order of 5 microradians. While the converting industry is much larger, it seldom has anything to say about alignment. When it does, such as a few machine builders and roller suppliers, an often quoted guideline is 100 microradians or 0.1 millimeters per meter. However, the great, great, great majority of builders, suppliers, and owners of web machinery alike are silent on the subject of alignment. That silence does not imply that alignment is not important. Only, I believe, that they are uncomfortable or just don't know how close rollers need to be. So here, I am not going to split hairs because that is literally what we would be doing if we argued whether the paper or converting industry had the best answer. In paper, it would be a half a hair's thickness, and in converting, it would be a hair and a half. This is not worth the argument for the moment. More problematic is the silence on the subject because that leaves people guessing as to what to do. Here, I will argue that even when guidelines are issued, that there could be problems. First, is that these guidelines are based on what we could do rather than what we should do. Just because we can measure and move to a hair's thickness does not mean that is good enough. There are cases such as stiff materials such as foil, and for certain components such as segmented rollers, where hair's breadth is not good enough. However, 
as we will see, in most cases, holding a hair's thickness tolerance is too good. What I mean by that is, is maintenance and costs increase with no benefit to improved runnability. The second problem is that the guidelines are single-sided. So, for example, if the standard is two thousandths of an inch and the roller is three thousandths of an inch out, does that mean we should move the roller? Of course not. Common sense, as well as ample experience in the paper industry, where just such a situation occurs frequently, we find there is no observable benefits to maintaining alignments at the edge of our measurement capabilities. So, in this paper, I'm going to argue a and propose a dual standard. That ingoing standards be set to best practices measurement resolution when a roller is moved and only if it can be done easily in a few shimming moves. Most precision tooling, including optical tooling, lasers, and gyroscopes can achieve a hair's breadth tolerance if they are properly designed, maintained, and used. The bigger challenge is outgoing standards that are when you should move a roller. The first method to determine outgoing alignment standards is by calculation based on some failure theory. We have several trustworthy theories that could calculate failure for path control, web breaks, and a most common type of wrinkling. Here, we will focus on the diagonal shear wrinkle caused by in-plane roller misalignment. This failure was first predicted by Dr. Good and others of the Web Handling Research Center nearly a quarter century ago. Looking at the graph of web tension versus misalignment angle, we will see a failure curve. If we are to the left of that curve, we will not be wrinkled in the ordinary QA sense of the word, a wrinkle passing over a roller. However, if we are to the right of that curve, we are wrinkled. Of course, web handlers and operators alike know that the first thing that you should try would be to change tension, because many problems are tension sensitive, including most wrinkles. So we should try increasing and decreasing tension to see if we can get outside of the failure curve. However, changing tensions is not a very satisfying strategy in the long run for two reasons. The first is that you might not be able to practically move tensions that far enough to clear the wrinkling curve. The second is that different materials have different curves. In this figure, you might not be wrinkled if you run a heavy material, but would be wrinkled if you run a light material. A much more robust treatment of this type of wrinkling is to specify an outgoing alignment tolerance that clears the wrinkling curve at all tensions and from the most challenging of lightweight materials you intend to run. This maximum level of misalignment is given as the red line. While well, the calculations for misalignment wrinkles are well tested and simpler than most web handling models, they are probably not something you want to do from scratch. Rather, the top web program from Rayologic will do this quite simply for you. It can calculate two types of failures. The first is when one edge goes slack. The second is a diagonal wrinkle that passes over the crooked roller. However, this commercial web handling program does much more than merely calculate roller alignment standards. It can also help with roller traction calculations, spreader sizing, wound roll models, and much more. Shown here is the input and output screen for the roller module. Here, the user must enter several simple inputs like roller geometry, web tension, and web modulus. The user then can experiment with different levels of misalignment to check for slack edges and wrinkles which are clearly flagged by words and pictures. The screen also does roller traction calculations including the effects of air entrainment. While TopWeb is very powerful, it does have a couple of disadvantages. First, it is expensive. Second, it may be more than you need if all you want to do is determine the standards for roller misalignments. An alternative program that is simple and free is the Wrinkle Predictor Abbott app. 
Here, you only need access to the internet and a few simple inputs. Of course, the best computer program is the real world. It turns out to be relatively easy to determine roller alignment standards for your materials in your plant. All you need to do is to set up a target roller that can be precisely and safely moved while the machine is running. A remote hand wheel is one example method. You slowly and precisely move the target roller out of parallel until you first see a diagonal trough and then a diagonal wrinkle. Web handlers know that the wrinkle points to the narrow side of the out of parallel roller pair. You can then move the roller in the opposite direction to get a second reading. You might think that this is too much work, because you would have to check every span of every roller in every direction on each of your machines and for all of your materials. Not so. Simply pick a worst case for your entire plant, and that is easy to determine from web handling principles. The worst case would be a thin, stiff web running between two closely spaced rollers with lots of traction. Setting maintenance standards are for a worst case situation is both conservative and normal practice in industry. So we could find an allowable misalignment either by calculation or by trial. However, we need to consider one more vital variable. That is, what is an appropriate safety factor? Here, other insults add directly and indirectly to the diagonal wrinkle. These include roller problems such as diameter profile. These include drive problems such as poor tension control. However, most of all, these include the real possibility of the baggy web. Thus, just because you are not wrinkling at this moment does not mean your machine alignment is good enough. You might be able to tolerate a bit of misalignment if the web is perfect. You also might be able to tolerate a bit of bagginess if the rollers are perfect. However, what you cannot tolerate would be the real world situation of an imperfect web running on an imperfect roller. Since rollers are easiest to correct, we want to make sure that they pose little additional risk. In other words, just good enough is not good enough. We want rollers to be more than good enough. Another reason that we need more than good enough is that to set alignment standards based on calculation or trial guarantees instant failure when you hit that value. You do not want wrinkles to fail within seconds or even minutes. You want to be wrinkles to be rare. Since real processes are stochastic, this is another way to say that safety factors are needed for reliability. So what value of safety factors should we apply to the values we just determined by calculation or trial? Here, we do not have enough expertise to give a direct answer. Instead, hints can be found from a much better studied problem that is of brittle web breaks such as occur on paper. In the paper and other industries, we have found that a minimum safety factor of 4 on tensile strength is needed for high reliability. Setting tensions any higher than 25% of web strength does not allow enough for other insults such as roller misalignment, drive tension errors, and most importantly, the fact that all webs have some bagginess and some edge flaws, and thus we do not have uniformly distributed stresses. In addition to the above considerations, we have one more. That is, alignment will slowly degrade with time. So good enough for a month or two may result in poor runnability in a year or two after foundations have settled a bit. So a safety factor of four may be good enough for a month or two, but not good enough for a year or two. Let us summarize the easier of the two criteria, ingoing standards. Several situations might cause people to decide that a roller needs to be moved. That could be during installation or maintenance, or it could be in response to an operational problem such as path variation, web breaks, or wrinkles at an angle. 
when we choose to remove a roller, we might consider 20 microradians because it is easy enough to achieve in most cases if the machine was designed to be easy to align. Of course, general rules come with many exceptions. Perhaps you know that some other value of ingoing tolerance would be more appropriate. An example might be if you prefer gyroscopes and they can only get 40 microradians and you know that is more than good enough. Another exception might be if a roller can't practically be moved to such precision because it has some other issues that are difficult to correct, such as a design that suffers from looseness. The more difficult but more important criteria would be outgoing standards. They answer the question of whether a roller should be moved. Here we are guided by web handling. We know the risks. Here we know that the risks include path control problems, web breaks, and wrinkles at an angle. First, we need to determine a threshold of pain from either calculation or measurement. That part is easy. The second and harder part is to determine a safety factor that is a best compromise from being too tight as to cause excessive maintenance costs and too loose as to cause excessive poor runnability costs. Here we might choose something between 4 for the converting industry to something like 10 for machines where there's not such a thing as a small problem. If we apply that type of safety factors to demanding situations, we get something very similar to guidelines already existing in converting and paper respectively. Another less specific method to determine standards might be an approach similar to what was used in the Mechanics of Rollers book. That is, to define classes of application. A class B of 20 microradians would be similar to what is already used in paper, and a class C of 100 would be similar to what is used in converting. To this nominal ingoing class, we could allow values to slip one class for outgoing standards and or to slip another class for spans that are in pure twist. This paper focused on a web handling view of roller alignment. It attempted a practical compromise between excessively tight and excessively loose set of standards for any particular situation. However, as we saw in the last module, there are many situations that pose special challenges. In these cases, we may need to spend more time aligning rollers, loosen our standards, allow more runnability problems, or some combination. Review questions. 1. What are the web-based definitions of misalignment? 2. What methods might you use to establish a threshold of pain? 3. What about a safety factor? Answers. 1. What are the web-based definitions of misalignment? In-plane bending, out-of-plane twisting, and offset center lines. 2. What methods might be used to establish a threshold of pain? One way would be to move and measure the amount of misalignment at the onset of wrinkling. Alternatively, you could calculate it via top web or wrinkle predictor. 3. What about a safety factor? The above methods would guarantee instant failure. A safety factor of 4 to 10 might be appropriate for the converting and paper industries respectively.